Hi, I'm Katrina Hawking, and I work for the ALS Association Evergreen Chapter. Hi, I'm Robert Hawking. My father had ALS. The ALS Association Evergreen Chapter helps families in Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska with care services, support groups, and loans of medical equipment that help them live as fully as possible while facing ALS. Welcome to our September wine tasting. We've been doing these wine tastings in support of the ALS Association Evergreen Chapter for about 18 months now, and we really enjoy doing them, and we hope you enjoy watching them. So uh, this month, uh, we've got a selection of wines that I just happened to pick out, and as I was kind of interested in trying them, and then it turns out that they're kind of a bit autumnal in, in many ways, uh, the grape selection, and um, actually our weather has just changed from being too hot over the summer to being autumnal uh, in the last week or so. so right, and yeah. the pumpkin spice is back and we're going to try some wines for autumn. What is this? Yeah, so this is a, a Riesling, so we're going to start with a Riesling um, and this is um, Poet Leap Poet's Leap uh, Riesling from the Columbia Valley and it's a 2018 and this is from the um, Long Shadows collections so that's they are actually a, um, a collection of uh, they, they have there's a range of these wines but they have a different uh, winemaker for each one of them um, that's interesting. Yeah. Poet's Leap, and it's the Long Shadow series. Yes. This is an amazing smell. I can smell it from like clear across the table. <laughs> yeah, it's a light, a light color, slightly yellowish, just a slight tinge of green. Mm. That's delicious. Mm, yeah. It really is. It's um. Uh, off dry so it's just got a little bit of sweetness but it's not um, we had a um, German Riesling uh, a week ago and that was uh, really quite sweet this is oh, it's this not is... sweet but it's very it's very uh, strong flavor mm -hmm. with a lot of florals yes yeah, so it's uh, I'm getting some green apples and jasmine a honeysuckle mm -hmm. um, and Honey, yeah. honey, flowers, honey and floral. Mm -hmm. Now this is really nice. What would you like to uh, to eat with this one, Robert? Um, yeah, I mean this one. This one is a good one for both for drinking on its own and for eating with. I think. Sure, um, you could have this at the beginning of a party when you were yeah. still cooking and. Yeah. Um, or, you know, this would go well with um, ham. Or uh, white meats, um, uh, some 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 fish as well. Yeah. Hmm. I'm wondering about the fish, but it would yeah. be a really nice party opener. Yeah. Um, as we're start starting, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think about party season. We have a lot of events coming up for the chapter at the end of this month. So the 25th is our Walk to Defeat ALS. It is being done in a socially distanced way this year with teams meeting on their own in their own neighborhoods. We have a walk in Olympia, a walk in Redmond, a walk in Bellevue, um, a walk in Ballard. Um, and if you haven't registered to walk there's still time to sign your team up or you can get in touch with the chapter and we can put you in touch with a walk that is close to you but we're keeping the walk smaller uh, rather than re re meeting in a large group this year to keep our patients and their families safe. Uh, the 25th is the day for the walk to defeat ALS so do join us. So our um, second wine is a Pinot Noir, which also is, uh, well, you can have Pinot Noir kind of all through the year, um, but it, it also goes, usually goes very well in the uh, autumn with mushrooms and things like that. But this one is interesting because it's, um, I've been wanting to do in uh, one of our tastings for a while, a Canadian wine. So this is from our uh, friends up in uh, British Columbia. It's from the Okanagan Valley, which is sort of north of eastern Washington. Um, and it's Quailed Skate uh, 2018 uh, Pinot Noir from the Okanagan Valley. 
So you don't see a lot of Canadian wine in the shops. No, you don't. I had to, I had to look around for a, <laughs> over a while to, to come up with this, actually. <laughs> but we took a great trip, was it like five years ago, yeah. through the o- Canadian Okanagan Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's, a, it, the, 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 it's interesting because they have... Um, it, it obviously they have a shorter growing season than, than in Washington, but it does get quite hot there. So it tends to be that what they do well are um, uh, red grapes that actually like a slightly um, a bit cooler. So uh, Pinot Noir and um, also Cab- we had some ni- very nice Cabernet Franc from there, uh, and and whites. They do they, 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 that's where they specialize in. That was a great trip, and we met <laughs> so many. Um winemakers who were doing small family winemaking and it was a really fun family vacation. What do you think of this wine, Robert? Well, it's, it's got a, a nice uh, or, uh, autumnal fruit nose. It's pretty mild. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's got a fair amount of um, a- acidity. Um, sure. Um, a little bit of tannin, a little yeah. bit of dryness mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, um, and possibly that this one might be one that you might want to do for um, summer or actually for winter. Possibly, maybe the the, the, the most autumnal of uh, Pinot Noirs. But it, it, it's, it's it's nice. It's got a um, uh, there's a cherry flavor. Oh there, yeah, it? I'm getting that. It would taste nice with all of the um, autumn foods mm-hmm. as well, getting into some of those mushrooms or mm-hmm. um, pate. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have some of this a little later with a little <laughs> bit of pate on cracker, a little bit of goose pate. Uh, we do have another event coming up also on the 25th. Uh, Denise Hagen is hosting a wine event at Uncorked and Unwind, which is a very cool little quirky wine bar in Tumwater. It's really nice. Um, and that is going to be also hosted in smaller groups. So there's two seatings for a small number of people on the 25th. Or if you prefer, if you're not in that area and you'd like to attend the event, or if you prefer to not be in a, a group just yet, you, there are two seatings for online um attendance of this wine tasting event where there's going to be information about the wine that you can pick up your wines ahead of time and try them at home or there'll be a selection of wines to taste at uncork and unwind on the 25th and that is going throughout the day with an, an early afternoon um, session and then a later or late afternoon early evening session yeah we last year we actually attended online and um uh, sampled some wines and that was it was it was good fun it was good fun <laughs> denise put on a great um event last year it was completely online this year she's uh, opening it up a little bit to some in person and some online the ladies who run on cork and unwind have um, some wonderful personalities and some great wine selection yeah. So actually speaking of uh, online wine, if, if you didn't see our last month's um, uh, video online, do check it out. It, we um, we had a great time uh, talking to Jim and Teresa, who um, uh, bought a package from us in the um, uh, auction at the gala. Um, and uh, so they, 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 we, we sampled one of the wines. We got to hear some uh, very interesting stuff from them about the services they've received from the um, Evergreen chapter of the ALS Association. And we got to taste some uh, really nice, nice wines. Uh, they were Northern Rhone uh, style. So it was uh, Marsan and a couple of um, Syrahs. It was very nice. It was, those was a beautiful a selection <laughs> of wines. And Jim and Teresa were a lot of fun and had some great information about their experience with the chapter. So do look at that wine tasting from last month. Okay, so our final wine of today is a Pitti Verdot. Now, uh, I've been wanting to do this as a, uh, for a little while because we're ha- having do- when we do this tasting, we'll have done a tasting of varietals of all the grapes in the, that go to, up to make up the red Bordeaux. So we've done, we, we've done uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, we've done Cabernet Franc, we've done Merlot. Uh, we, a couple of months ago, we did Malbec. 
and uh, a few months back we did uh, Carmen Yair. And so this is the last one, this is Pity Verdo. Now, um, it's fairly rare to come across Pity Verdo as a, um, uh, a varietal. Um, in Bordeaux, it's 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 only it's not used everywhere in Bordeaux, and where it is, it's very rare for it to be a more than four percent of the blend. Um, you sometimes see places are in in the rest of the world where have they have twenty five percent of the blend, but so this is a um, uh, a Washington uh, uh, Pity Verdot. It's uh, freehand cellars. <laughs> it's from the Yakima Valley, and it's a twenty nineteen. Now, when I've tried uh, Pity Verdo in in Washington tastings in the past, I've never quite it's never quite gelled for me. But so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this how this works out. <laughs> it has a really dark purplish burgundy color to it. Yeah, so um, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a very full body, and it's um, uh, Pity Verdo is also fairly known for being fairly tannic. So tannic and full bodied. Okay, and. I'm excited and a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, strong tenants. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, there, but there's just um, uh, I'm, I'm getting violets. It does have an unusually floral taste yes. for. Uh, um, the the finish is quite short. It it it, it it's um. Uh, yeah, it's it gone did. almost instantly. Yeah, though you do you still get the the, the effect of the tan. Um, I'm going to try this uh, with um, some uh, ribs. I think that that oh. that with um, uh, quite spiced meats is a, a, a maybe a, a good one to try this to with. balance it out. Yeah, I mean it does have some unusual flavors that floral up front, mm -hmm. and then the. Um, Sort of structured center mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, but that um, I, I think I think um, the, you know, this is helping Pity Verdo grow on me as a, a varietal, and I'm I, and I'm definitely going to uh, see how it goes with food because I think I think it can go goes better with food than as a um, uh, something to dr to drink on its own probably. Do you think it might open up in the glass a little? Uh, yes, actually, um, I, I didn't. Um, I didn't air these out, so uh, I think possibly, you know, given um, half an hour of, uh, of airing, it might um, open up. Yeah. Well, maybe you can add a, a <laughs> follow-up to the to this wine as we some, um, re cork it and see if it uh, opens yeah. up a little bit over time, and we can post a little follow-up to the ex Petit Verdot experiment. Thank you very much for joining us um, and for supporting the ALS Association Evergreen Chapter. Please do join an event, um, come to a walk, or support someone who is walking by making a donation, or reach out to Denise at Uncork and Unwind and get a ticket to that event. I'm going to be walking on the 25th. I'm walking with a group on the 18th who is doing their walk a little bit earlier, and I am going down to Uncork and Unwind to see what wines they'll be tasting down there, all in support of a great cause. Thank you for joining us, and um, keep safe, and uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed the wine. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the Riesling for my toast. This was my favorite. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. <laughs>